Biggest Handset Disasters Part 2 A few months ago we looked at what we considered to be the 10 biggest handset disasters of all time. Well, there's no shortage of devices that failed in the market, either because they were ill-conceived, weird, or just too far ahead of their time. 11. Nokia N9 and N950, 2011 Nokia's one and only commercially available Mego handset, the Nokia N9 is actually a pretty desirable bit of kit with a well-regarded operating system and a highly influential hardware design that was copied by Nokia's Lumia range and helped to popularise brightly coloured plastics. Also available to developers only was the Nokia N950, a handset that's quite rare and is highly sought after. The N9 represents Nokia's utter failure to come up with a homegrown rival to the iPhone. Coming two years after its predecessor, the N900, the N9 was too late to make a difference, partly because of a foolish decision to try to merge platforms with Intel. It was obvious even before launch that the N9 was going to be doomed, and even before it was launched in a few minor markets the project was killed, and Nokia went with a Windows platform instead. The bottom line? The world doesn't need another mobile phone OS, no matter how good it is. Buyer's Guide N950s are available from time to time but are expensive. Prices range from €700 Euro all the way up to €2,300. Euro. Strictly speaking, they are all property of Nokia and were sent to developers only. The Nokia N9 is more commonly available for between 260 to 330 euro depending on model. 12. Nokia 7700 and 7710 2003 and 2004. Nokia's first attempt at a touchscreen was the Nokia 7700, which was a strikingly designed device, but it was far too big to be practical and features Nokia's infamous side-talking system where you had to speak into the side of the phone rather than the front. The 7700 was also crippled by a lack of memory, so that particular device was cancelled and replaced with the slimmed down and slightly upgraded Nokia 7710. The 7710 lacked the essentials of 3G and Wi-Fi, and consumers weren't really interested in touchscreen phones anyway. Instead of sticking with it, Nokia ditched the idea of touchscreen smartphones, which was to prove a mistake. Buyer's Guide The Nokia 7700 is one of the rarest Nokias around, with prices starting at about €700, Euro, but they're so rarely available that one could cost much more. The 7710 is a lot cheaper but still uncommon at around €20 Euro to €150 Euro, depending on condition. 13. Nokia N-Gage 2003 A handheld gaming console from Nokia, the Nokia N-Gage should have been a winner, but Nokia got it badly wrong. It was too bulky to use as a phone, too limited to be used for games, so it was never very popular. An attempt to improve the platform with the 2004 N-Gage QD wasn't much of a success either. Buyer's Guide. There seems to be quite a lively trade in the N-Gage and cartridge games. Prices range from €10 Euro or less to €30 Euro for the handset itself. 14. Sony Ericsson Xperia Play 2011 the lack of success for the N-Gage meant that there were no other high-profile phone games console hybrids until 2011 with the launch of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play. Where the N-Gage was underpowered, the Xperia Play was much more powerful, although hardly high-end. Despite this, the Xperia Play wasn't a success and no attempt was made to revive the format. Buyer's Guide Officially, the Xperia Play is stuck with Android 2.3, although there are some custom ROMs available with later versions. It's an inexpensive device on the second-hand market, typically coming in at €40 Euro or less. 15. Sony Ericsson Vivas 2010 Sony Ericsson's Symbian Swansong, the Sony Ericsson Vivas, featured a pretty unpleasant resistive touchscreen where almost everything else has moved to superior capacitive displays. The handset might have done better in 2008 than 2010. 
the VVAS and its sibling, the VVAS Pro, were commercial failures, and Sony Ericsson never made another Symbian handset after that. Buyer's Guide. There are not many of these on the market, but those that are tend to be very cheap indeed. 16. Sony Ericsson P1i 2007. Sony Ericsson was a pioneer with Symbian touchscreen devices, but the Sony Ericsson P1i represented a step in the wrong direction for their P series of smartphones. Although in many ways it was superior to the original Apple iPhone launched at roughly the same time, the small stylus driven screen and physical QWERTY keyboard were not the sort of things that consumers wanted. Buyer's Guide a quirky and quite interesting device, it also falls into the rare but cheap category of handsets that can be hard to find, but come in at less than €50 Euro or so. 17. Samsung i8510 2008 In 2008, Symbian was by far the best-selling smartphone platform around, even though the iPhone was coming into its second generation. In order to try and get a slice of the pie that was dominated by Nokia, Samsung released the Samsung i8510, also known as the Innovate. A well-designed, well-engineered device with a good feature set, it seemed like an attractive proposition, but it turned out that customers preferred their Nokias to be made by Nokia after all. Buyer's Guide. Like the VVAS, this probably only appeals to collectors of non-Nokia Symbian devices, and it's another uncommon but inexpensive handset coming in at less than €30. Euro. 18. Nokia N97 2009 It should have been a winner. A touchscreen phone like the Nokia 5800 combined with a QWERTY keyboard like the Nokia Communicator and a feature set that looked great on paper. But the Nokia N97 was slow, buggy and had several design flaws that made consumers unhappy. Most of these were fixed with the rather better N97 Mini launched later in the year. But keyboards were on the way out anyway and in retrospect the entire concept was not likely to be a winner. Buyer's Guide. The N97 in Mini and non-Mini versions sells for around €25 to €50. Euro. 19. Nokia X7 2011 Symbian had already been given its death sentence by the time the Nokia X7 was announced which led to a speedy collapse of that particular product line. The coffin-like design of the X7 didn't help either, although as with all late Symbian devices it is actually a pretty good phone. Consumers don't like buying into a dead-end product and the X7 was certainly one of those. Buyer's Guide Resale values are quite high. Expect to pay between 60 to 120 euro for an unlocked version. 20. Nokia 5000 2008 With a product number like this, you'd expect the Nokia 5000 to be something special. A good looking and inexpensive device, one of the key features was that it had an MP3 player. But with no expandable memory and just 12 megabytes of internal storage, you could probably fit in only about three tracks, which was a bit useless. And you also had to be careful about how many photos you took with a 1.3 megapixel camera too. Adding a micro SD slot would have transformed the product. As it was, it was almost completely useless. Buyer's Guide. If you collect chocolate teapots, then the Nokia 5000 might be the phone for you. Good ones can be had for next to nothing.